I want to welcome you to week six of a study in Galatians. You know, I want to encourage you. Go back to June 21st of 2021. That's two and a half years ago. I mean, literally, it's been that long since we started this In Him Scripture study. Go back to June 21st of 2021 and, and start listening to where it began, where this In Him Scripture study began, and look at where it's, where it's come to today. We went through that entire card, took 41 weeks to do that. We're, uh, right now, we're, we're filming videos to go into the, the prisons on the tablets of that very study. And uh, took us 41 weeks to do that. We went through a, a study in Romans, a study in First and Second Corinthians, and now we're in Galatians. And I want to invite, invite you to download the app that you can get every one of these these podcasts for free. Don't cost you anything. Download the app. Go to the website. It's the-prodigalson.com. Download that app. You can go all the way back to June 21st of 2021 and, and start listening to that whole thing. Listen to every one of them. And, and you can listen to them as much as you want. This podcast started in 2018. I encourage you to go all the way back to the beginning and listen to all of them. The other day I was looking and, and looking to see how many we had. It was, it was almost 1,500, 1,470-something podcasts that we've done in the last five years, well, over five years now, five and a half years. So, so I encourage you to get that podcast or that podcast app and download it and, and, and live in who you are in Christ Jesus. Because since 2018, we've been, we've been preaching the same message, and that is Jesus Christ and Him crucified, living in Him, knowing who we are in Him and what God's Word, faith in God and what, what God's Word will do in your life. Yeah, because it'll, it'll, it'll set you free. It will make you free. The word, the truth will make you free. Now, I, wanna, I want to encourage everyone that listens to this podcast to, to take this thing and share it on your social media. Share it so others can be set free. There's people out here in this world that have lived in shame and condemnation their entire life in legalism, in religion, and they don't have to. I'm talking about born again people, people that are saved, living in the shame and the condemnation of their good works. That's what we've been talking about in Galatians: is not falling back into the works of the flesh. How good we can be, but living in the strength and the knowledge and understanding of what Jesus Christ done for us. Uh, I go by, I go back sometimes and listen to some of these messages myself because I grow strength from them. I, I see people's lives being changed in jails and prisons, get letters. I go physically into two different jails twice a week and, and get to, get to uh, minister in six different pods twice a week, and, and it, it thrills me to be able to come in and, and see the look on, on people's face in these, in these jails that, that, that you know, they're, they're finding hope in him finding hope in, in what the Word says about them, to them and for them. And, and, and they're finding out that, my goodness, I'm not that, that useless, hopeless person that, that religion has made me out to be, the, that, that I thought I was. One of the very things that I do all the time in, in jails, I said, look, don't look yourself in the mirror and see an inmate. Look at yourself and, and see a child of God, a born-again child of God that knows who they are in Christ. These Ephesians prayers that I do five days a week on this podcast are important. Don't skip through them. As a matter of fact, take the notes that we put in. They're, they're right there. It's in the New Living Translation. If you don't want to read it in the New Living, you can read it in the King James or whatever translation you read. 
But go through these prayers with us because this is my desire for every person that walks this planet that they they come to realize and know and understand just how much God loves them, just how much he wants them to be strong in this world. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3, 14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God I see that love and mercy, grace, and goodness more and more every day in my life. You know how? I see it through His Word. I see it through the truth in His Word and just how much we all can stand on that Word. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your Word. Guide me. Lord, touch my mind and touch my mouth. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Galatians 2.21. It says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if, if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Let me read this in the New Living Translation. It says, I do do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. For if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. You know what he's getting at. This is this Paul. Paul he said you can frustrate the grace of God. In other words, you can you can make it just null and void. How? How? By by trying to get right back into the law. That's what he was. He he wanted the 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 Galatians to see this, and uh, not necessarily make it null and void, but but just really just really mess up what God was was doing. In the church at that time, what he's doing today in this church, in in today in this in this day and time, God's grace is far is far far bigger than most people will ever be able to grasp in this world, and and when we try to go back to the law and and try to, there's a fine line because you know. Me trying to do good in this world is is something that we all ought to strive to do. But all the goodness that I can muster, it has nothing to do with my salvation. It's the fruit of my salvation, not the root of it. In other words, I didn't get born again because I was a, a good person. Or I done done something to you know to to uh, walk along in the law. 
at one time in my life. No, I was I was saved by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And and Paul's talking about this today. He said, "Listen, he said Christ died in vain. If if uh, walking in the law and doing striving to fulfill the law in our own flesh, he died in vain. And he said he said he didn't do it." Let, let me read the Amplified Classic. It says, Therefore, I do not treat God's gracious gift as something of minor importance and defeat its very purpose. I do not set aside and invalidate and frustrate and nullify the grace unmerited favor of God. He said, I ain't doing this. He said, I'm not trying to do this. He says, for it just it for if justification, righteousness, acquittal from guilt comes through observing observing the ritual of the law, then Christ the Messiah died groundless and and to no purpose in vain. His death was then wholly superfi- superfluous. Whatever that word is. I don't even know what that word that word means, but is is in other words, he said, if if this is true, is keep, if keeping the law is true, God died for our Jesus died for nothing. He he was and the King James said he then Christ is dead in vain. In other words, he died in vain, and he sure didn't. He, Jesus Christ done what we couldn't do, and and that's what I'm proclaiming today. Today, Jesus didn't die in vain. <laughs> Honey, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ and his sacrifice, his crucifixion on on this earth and being raised from the dead, none of us, none of us would have a chance, a snowball's chance in a hot place to forever survive this world. But he didn't. He didn't die in vain. He looked at, at this world and said they need a Savior, and I'm the only one that can pay the debt. And he came and done just exactly what he said he was going to do, and that was shed his blood for our sins so that people could get hold of and understand just how much God cares for them, just how much he loves them, and so that they could come to him and accept him as who he is. And that's the Savior. You know, I was talking about this the other night. And uh, this is uh, this is something another preacher said this one time, and I heard it, and it, and it stands to reason. Uh, and, and he he was talking about where we should study the most, uh, what part of the Bible that we should uh, we as born again Christians today uh, should study the most. He said, if you will look at my Bible, you'll see that it's worn more in Paul's epistles than anywhere else. He said, I'm not telling you not to read the Old Testament. I'm not telling you not to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He said, but I study the the most of my Bible, my study time, is in the epistles. He said, because the epistles are what uh, Paul used to tell us how to live as a Christian, and who we are in Christ. And and just he, he just went down the line and laid it out. He said, furthermore, he said, and this is something that you really think about, but he, or you don't think about, uh, uh, in other words, but he said, if you didn't know anything, if you didn't even, uh, didn't ever study anything but Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and a lot of preachers, that's all they'll preach is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and, and then they'll get back over in the Old Testament. But uh, he said, if you only if you only knew Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you'd have a really hard time figuring out how you how you're supposed to live in this world without the epistles. Now we all know how to live because of of the epistles. But he said, listen, he said, spend your time, and this is this is uh, very important. Spend your time, the majority of your study time, the majority of your reading. Read the Paul, uh, Paul's epistles. Read the New Testament past Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and get hold of what Paul was was changed on Damascus Road to do, and that was to teach us where to live, how to live, how to walk, how to be strong in Him, and it just it goes on and on how that God wants us to be. 
uh, to live in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and who he is, not who we are. So Christ didn't die in vain. And and these Galatians, and you, we, you've heard this for the last few weeks, but these Galatians, have they 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 were born again? They accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and and were doing fine. But yet they they were try, reaching back into the old covenant and trying to justify themselves through the law. And Paul said, "No, this ain't right." And you'll find out in the next chapter that uh, I mean, Paul just put it put to put it in in plain English. We're not going to talk about it today, but. Uh, he told them who they are in Christ Jesus, their Lord and Savior, and he, he told them who had he, who had put them in that position, and that was Christ, not not uh, anything that has anything to do with the law. So I'm I want to encourage you now. You say, well, you telling me that I ain't supposed to 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 strive to to do the Ten Commandments. Absolutely not. I'm not telling you that. And if anybody says that I am, they're lying. No, I'm not telling you to to do away with the commandments. No, a a, a Christian, a born again child of God, ought to strive to do as as to live a good a life as they can. I promise you. Now, there's people out here that use the grace of God and and frustrate the grace of God and and just pl- plainly just use it for their own benefit. But uh, those people are deceived because those people are are the ones that are just I mean just going out here and doing anything and th- th- saying that Christ died for that and and He's forgiven me. Well, I I kind I kind of wonder whether or not they've ever made Jesus Lord. Because if you can just go out here and and just do anything, live in any kind of uh, any kind of lifestyle, or just get out and carouse around and just you know just do all kinds of crazy worldly stuff, that makes me wonder whether or not you're born again to start with. That's the reason I I give every person a a, a opportunity to be born again on this podcast because you never know, you never know. There's a lot of people out here that, you know, I heard this lady told me one time. She said, I've asked God to forgive me 10,000 times. She said, I do it all the time. Ask him to forgive me. Well, uh, I, when she said that, I thought to myself, have you ever made him Lord? Do you, do you realize what, what Christ's sacrifice has done in your life? And I don't think she has. I really don't. Uh, I've tried to be a light to her and tried to help her. But there's some people that just they they they're hung up on what they can do instead of what Christ did, and that's a that's a that's a bad place to be in your life. Is how, what you, what I can do? I can't do anything to justify me. I can't. I'm, I've quit trying and started living in Christ Jesus, my Lord and Savior, living in what He has done on this earth so that we could walk free. But I'm going to ask you a question today. I'm going to make a statement. Jesus didn't die in vain. He died to save every person on this planet. God, God, The Bible talks about it, that God's not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. I'm going to ask you today, have you been born again? Have you made Jesus Lord of your life? Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. Won't you be born again today? Won't you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart, into your life, and save you. He will. I promise you he will. He will gloriously save you. All you have to do is is let him. Let him come into your heart and into your life. Confess him as Lord today. Confess him by faith that he is your Lord and Savior today. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And you shall be saved. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today. And watch him change your life forever.
Glory to God. Hey, listen, I want to invite y'all, go to the website. There is all kinds of resources on that website. You can get in touch with us. You can you can request prayer. You there there's a app of a podcast app that you can download. There's all kinds of you can get you can see our YouTube channel. I don't say a whole lot about this stuff. YouTube don't don't get a lot of a lot of uh uh, traffic. I don't know why. It just don't because I guess I do know why too. Because the biggest part of it is just uh, audio videos. You know, they're on Tuesdays. On to I want to let you know on Tuesdays uh, we put out a video that that goes into the prisons, and uh, we also put it on this on this YouTube channel so people can see it. So on Tuesdays. Right now, it's been Tuesdays for years now, but, you know, we may end up changing it to Thursdays and, and go ahead and simulcast it on YouTube when we do it on Thursday nights. But right now, we, we're not able to do that. So uh, just if you remember, Tuesdays, uh, we, we put a video out, a real video that we that we uh, we film and, and send into the prisons on the tablets. So uh, go to our website. There's all kinds of resources. If you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you because you're helping us do this. You're helping us put this word out all over this planet free of charge. And I praise God for faithful partners that do that. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Diligently pray and ask God what he'd have you do. To do to sow into this ministry to help us reach out further. You know, we like 5,477 uh, more jails and prisons out here that don't have these these uh, videos on their tablets. And we're believing today that they're there. So pray about partner with us. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the dash prodigal son dot com.